Hello everybody, my name is Richard Smith. I'm the director of the Tank Museum and today I'm going to be talking about one of my favourite things. One of the joys of the uh, current turgid awfulness um, is the chance for us here at the Tank Museum to uh, enthuse about our favourite stuff and to ride our personal hobby horses without fear of interruption. Um, and so I thought it'd be nice uh, to do a couple of talks on a few of my favourite things and some of the treasures uh, we've got uh, at the Tank Museum here in Bovington. Now, if I was going to pick one treasure which I thought was one of the most exciting things ever when I first saw it, it would be the one that I'm going to talk about today. Now, Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery was the most senior British commander of the Second World War, arguably the most famous British soldier of the Second World War, although not so famous that when I asked my wife who he was, her response wasn't anything other than, was he an army dude? I digress. Um, but he was famously photographed many, many times during the Second World War, wearing the beret of the Royal Tank Regiment. And there are lots of images in existence of him wearing this hat. Now, the hat in the picture that you see there is this hat, which we hold at the Tank Museum. We've even got a note from Montgomery himself that says, this beret was given to me by a sergeant in the RTR, the NCO in command of my tank during the Battle of Alamein in October 1942. It was worn by me from Alamein to Tunis when it was so dirty that I got a new one. It was the sergeant's own beret. I added my general's badge to it and have worn the black beret with two badges ever since. We have Montgomery's hat. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I've got a bit of a soft spot for hats in general. Now, of course, during the Second World War, Montgomery wore lots of hats. He, this, this one didn't last. He says so in the letter itself. But the one we hold is the first and the original hat. Now, it was given to Montgomery by Sergeant Jim Fraser, who is actually in the photograph that you saw earlier drinking tea with Montgomery, because Fraser was Montgomery's driver. And Fraser was driving Montgomery uh, through the desert in 1942. And the story is told by Jim was that uh, Montgomery started off by wearing sort of a big broad brimmed bush hat. Uh, but this had a habit of blowing off. Uh, whenever he looks out of the top of the turret to see what was going on or to, to speak to the troops. Uh, so they kept having to stop the tank to go and fetch this hat after it had blown off. And Jim recalls in his memoirs, he says this, he says, I shoved my beret into the turret muttering, tell him to wear this and we'll get there quicker. And the aide de camp handed beret the, Mon the to Montgomery who tried it on and liked it. Now, have a look at this hat and, and let's think about it, because Montgomery is a man who is fluent in the language of hats. And therefore, this hat wasn't just to keep his head warm or to keep the dust out of his hair. Um, indeed, actually, if you look at the way Montgomery is wearing this hat, if someone else had done what he was doing here, he'd have probably fired them. So he's wearing this hat to give a message. Now, you see, when Montgomery arrives in the desert, he's very conventionally dressed. However, he quickly realises that the desert army has a number of really key problems. The first one is that they keep getting beaten and they actually felt beaten. A second one was that the British have this habit of personifying their enemy. Um, and the personification of Rommel was fundamentally that this guy's really good and he might be better than our guys. So there's a couple of problems Montgomery has got to overcome. So what's he doing with this hat? Well, firstly, he's trying to look distinctive. And actually, to be precise, he's trying to look as distinctive as his opponent is. Now, if you're British and you want to look distinctive, you put on a silly hat. It's pretty straightforward. 
Now, it starts not with this hat, but with, as I said, the broad brimmed bush hat. And he'd actually fixed all the badges of the units under his command to it. Um, but it turned out to be impractical, although it had been distinctive. So he switches to this hat. And the key thing with this hat is the message. Now, while he may have obtained the hat because of a spur of the moment decision by his driver, the fact he continues to wear it was no accident. And the message is clear. The message is, this is serious. The gloves are off. We're going to have to go beyond just courage and eccentricity. And we're going to have to be professional. Now, this professional bit is a big deal, especially if you're British. Remember, this is a culture that values effortless brilliance above all things. When you're going professional, they're at the peak of a crisis. You're at the turning point of history. This is the level of serious where you know the Aussies would cancel a barbecue. The, the French would stop drinking wine at lunch. The Germans, I don't know, would start telling jokes. This this is a really big deal when the British go professional. And even the term professional is it's one of those loaded terms. It's, it's, it's rather an irregular word, depending on the context it's used. So you know, I am professional. You take yourself a bit too seriously. He is slightly blue collar. Professional's a big deal as a word. If you, if you want to see the, the importance of professional uh, as a term, uh, watch the, the film Chariots of Fire and look at the difference between amateur and professional in terms of status. And you'll see what a big step it is to go professional. Um, so professional is highly significant here. And one of the messages is once you said we're going to have to be professional, you better jolly well win, otherwise it just looks undignified. And the way he says, I'm being professional now, is two ways. The first one is, this hat is a Royal Tank Regiment hat. And to this day, the Royal Tank Regiment is an organisation which is defined by the word professional. The professional concept is absolutely central to the ethos of the Royal Tank Regiment. They've always been mechanised soldiers. They've always had expertise at the core and the centre of what they do as an organisation. They value expertise in a way that few other organisations in Britain do. And so this professional is, is written into them and it's written into the things around them. And remember, of course, Montgomery himself wasn't Royal Tank Regiment. He's from another regiment, he's Warwickshire's. So he's wearing another regiment's hat, which means he's taking on their persona, saying, this is the kind of general I am. So it's a Royal Tank Regiment hat. And the second thing is that this is a sergeant's hat. Now, uh, Alan Mallinson wrote a marvellous book called The Making of the British Army. And my favourite line in Alan Mallinson's Making of the British Army is, is a quotation he takes from just after the Battle of Waterloo, uh, where he, a, a soldier asked to reflect on his experience there uh, about how they come to win. Has asked about how they're trained and how, how they go about doing the fighting. And one of his reflections that he records uh, is, well, the sergeant's taught us how to fight and the officers taught us how to die and the British army is an organization that separates the two key forms of leadership it separates moral leadership which is the job of an officer and professional leadership which is the job of the NCO the the, the moral leadership this is a come on kind of leadership it means that the traditional role of a junior British officer is to die well, that the fighting, the professional, the science, the, the this is how you kill the other guy, that's the job of the sergeant. And Montgomery wears a sergeant's hat, professional. 
So in this house, we see not just an odd piece of headwear that belonged to an important person. We see the physical embodiment of the messaging that Montgomery wants to convey to his army at a key turning point of the Second World War. If you want to understand Montgomery's approach to rigour and operational practice, you need look no further than this hat. So there are two things I take from this hat. Firstly, for all of us, for all things you see in a museum, for objects that are preserved for posterity in our cultural institutions, we shouldn't just see stuff. You know, this is not just a Royal Tank Regiment beret. We shouldn't even necessarily just see uh, the next layer down. The, the owner of the stuff this isn't just a beret that belonged to Bernard Montgomery. We should look for meaning. We should look for why. Why is it important? Why does it look odd? Why is this significant as an object? And for me personally, I have the joy of working in a place where this hat is only about 50 metres away from where I sit every day. And every day I can go downstairs, I can look at it whatever I want, I can step back and say, what a wonderful thing. Thank you very much. Here at the Tank Museum, we are trying to produce a wider range of online content while the museum is closed because of coronavirus. And um, over this period, it would be wonderful if you could support us through any means that you can, in particular through Patreon, through joining our friends, or through buying things like Tank Museum slippers in our online shop. Thank you very much for your support.